Hello and welcome to this LightWave tutorial. I'm your host Leandro and I will be showing you some of the LightWave interfaces today. Now this won't be your typical 101 tutorial so I'm not going to show you every little bit that LightWave can do but even though you might be a novice I'm going to show you how with simple steps you can actually create something that looks pretty professional even though you've never really used LightWave before. So without further ado let's get started. Okay, now to start off in Lightwave, what you should do is either load up a finished 3D object that you have, which is also called a mesh, or go ahead and create your own. So normally everything is done in Lightwave layout. However, if you do want to create your own 3D object, we have to fire up Modeler. Now to keep this simple, I'm not going to create any complex shapes. So I'm going to create a text and I think I'm going to write down Lightwave. So we have to make sure that this pane create is already selected. We go down to text, press on that once. And then now normally you could press with the left mouse button into any of these windows and then you would have a cursor blink and you could type away, but more advanced users actually press the end button. Now you get this input field. So in here I'll just go type light wave. Now what we should do here is also select our appropriate font. Now I'm just going to keep it simple and just select Arial Narrow, that should be alright. Uh, we can center it and also say uh, in, you know, what axis we want to have this on. So um, this is another kind of help that you get is uh, if you want to make sure that you're looking at it from the front on the right field side, you should put it on the Z axis. So we'll go ahead and do that and then center it. And we can also say, okay, we want this scaled up to 200%. Uh, we maybe want to position it more specifically, but uh, all this will do for now. So just click into the box again. So this is highlighted, press the return button and your text will be created. So now this is our perspective view. So this is how it's going to look like. As you can see, it's still 2D. Uh, nothing spectacular just yet. So we'll close this window. Now, what we want to do to make this 3D is go to multiply and then extrude. So all you need to do now is just press the left mouse button down somewhere here near the 2D object. So press it down, move the mouse slightly to, well, I'll say to the right. You can go either way, but if you go the other way, you've got some kind of like a embedded effect, uh, which doesn't look really too good unless you've got a good uh, looking background that appropriately fits. So we'll let go of the button. And now, as you already can see in the perspective mode, we've got the 2D text now finally in a 3D object. So this is all we're going to do in Modeler for now. Um, what we should do is save the 3D object. Uh, I've already created a folder for this. I'll just call this light wave. Save it as that. Now you can, if you already know what the texture or color is going to look like, go to the surface editor and change the settings here. But we'll go have a look at that in light wave layout. So we can shut down modeler. So just quit the application. And now in light wave layout, make sure the items uh, are selected here and then press on object to load up an object. So navigate to where we have our object. There we go. It's already selected. Now what we can do, because there's already a light set up in, in the scene, uh, is press the F9 button and we should see a nice preview already. Nothing spectacular again, but there you go. That's our, our 3D object. Now what we're going to use mainly is in the modify plan is actually the move, rotate and size. Uh, tools because they're going to be very important later on. Now make sure you've got object selected and then which object? Well in this case we've only got one which is our Lightwave 3D text. So press the rotate button. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts here. Now what we can do, hold down the mouse, left mouse button again and just slightly move the mouse in any direction we want. Um, you can press the move button again and then now this time hold down the left mouse button and then go down with the mouse to actually get the uh, Lightwave text closer to the camera, let go of the left mouse button. And then basically we've already got a, a, a scene set up here. So like I said, the, the light and the camera settings have already been sort of preset. You know, the default settings are not too bad to start off with and you'll get this quick preview. So again, it might look white, but it's actually supposed to be bright gray. So if you know the RGB values, you can uh, set them here. So just press the, press the left mouse button again, move it along. Same here, and you can see it's already taking, uh, you know, a certain color. But um, to do it quicker, just press on the button here, and you get a color picker. Now it's similar on the Windows uh, operating system as well. So just preset the green, for example. You get a nice looking green. Um, you can also add a glow effect. It's, it looks quite nice. Doesn't always do the job. Now you won't see it straight away. You have to actually do a pre-render to see the glow. So set that to 100%. So if you do an F9 
right now, hit the F9 button, you won't see the glow effect because by default, the glow effect's actually turned off. So what we've got to do is go to the Windows menu, press back drop options, go all the way to the processing tab, active, click on the enable glow, and then set this to 100% again. Otherwise, whatever value we've just given it in the uh, surface editor, it actually will um, only have half of that value. Now, low radius, 8, eight pixels is, is fine, but the higher you go with this, the further away the glow effect will go from the object. So now we hit the F9 key and you should see a nice glow effect. Now this obviously doesn't look really nice, but we can uh, quickly change that. We can either set a texture, something that Lightweb will create for us, an endless texture which is called a procedural texture, or we use a texture that you've created yourself, say in Photoshop, which is easy, it will import Photoshop files as well, or any other picture you might have, or just a solid color, or even a gradient. For that we can press on the T for texture button. Now, on, it depends what texture you're using, it will, it will ignore the green setting here, or depending on what you're choosing, what your final option will be, uh, blending mode wise, you can have the green work for you, so you can still have a texture load up, but it will have a slight uh, tinge of green. So here, I'm going to go with a procedural texture, we'll just get rid of the preset here, we don't need that. So procedural texture, you can already see this is what the texture is going to look like, and then you can give it a nice colour. I'm not sure what goes good with green. Something red, maybe, uh, something like that. Probably won't look really nice, but you get the idea. Now, you've got a nice sort of presets here for textures. Now, you've got also got to make sure that uh, whatever you set here, none of the settings are always the same. So this one's got like frequencies and contrast, whereas these settings here have wave sources and wavelength. Now, you really can see here a quick preview of what the texture might look like, depending also on, on the size you actually give it. So uh, we'll just go with this one, say, use this texture. Again, the open gel won't show you necessarily what it's going to look like, so you hit the F9 key and you get a quick preview. There you go, you can see how that's uh, been added. Now that, I have to admit, doesn't look very nice, so probably should have planned that ahead uh, to make something uh, stand out. But if you're not happy with this, click on the Windows button and we'll use one of the presets that Lightwave comes, comes with. So you've got several options to choose from. You've got glass, metal, nature, organic, uh, and all sorts of other things. Now I've got rock selected for a specific reason. I like the lava texture in here. So just double click on that and it'll ask you to load the settings. I would just say yes. Sometimes, depending on the size uh, and how complex your render might be, it will actually warn you if a texture is too high resolution uh, that it might increase your render times dramatically. So in this case, just press OK, and it doesn't give us this warning, so it looks like our texture size is very appropriate. Now hit the F9 key again, and that looks way better. Now you can add to this texture an envelope, which is basically a keyframe in time. So say you set, um, you know, the exact this look at frame zero, and then you go ahead, say 25 frames, which will be which represents one second, and then you can say, well, I want to have these values set to something totally different. You know, something like this. This this texture here doesn't really give you a good example. It hardly changes when you change the values. So maybe we'll choose something like this. Um, now you can set the uh, envelopes there, but for now this is okay. But you get the idea. Um, use texture, hit the F9 key, and then say at frame 20 it would now look something like this, for example. Uh, now this already has given it more a wood texture, although that wasn't really my goal. Anyway, moving right along. We've uh, now set this up. So this is basically how you would give a 3D object a nice texture, something that you've made yourself, you know, or very quickly with Lightwave. Now the next thing I normally do in the scene is make sure that the lights are set up correctly. And it also depends again what you want to do. Um, sp specifically, if I'm doing a, um, uh, say, a 3D space scene, three waypoint light system setup uh, loaded, and uh, this is also something I'm going to make sure that you can download, but. Uh, that will give it more a realistic look the way I have it set up. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of how I've, how I've done it, but again, if you download that project file and have a look at how the lights are set up, you should get a pretty good idea of what that uh, actually does. And you can also Google it and it will, you get a nice explanation because uh, you know the professionals uh, in TV these days use it all the time. Uh, although you might only have one light source in space, and space is generally dark, for TV it might not really necessarily work. So that's why they have three separate lights, uh, you know, shining on a specific object. 
And uh, again, although you might say, oh, hang on, that might make it way too, way too bright 